So I've noticed that a lot of people actually end up taking the position they first get exposed to when they consciously research something. So let's say you start to get into physics. What I notice is that a lot of people take the position they first got exposed to as the most true, or at least the first one that they got exposed to in depth. So this is one thing that I noticed that actually people take positions on, which is not purely rational because the first position you got exposed to is not necessarily the correct one, but it seems to me like people become biased towards the first position they got exposed to. So this is one driver of thought or opinion that people usually don't think about, in my opinion. Incentives is a big one. You start with believing what you want to believe, believing what you want the truth to be. So values is another one. And I um, honestly think people just innately, naturally have different values. And it's like genetically encoded. I really don't believe in a blind slate theory. I know like siblings, for example, who are like, I don't know, one year apart or twins. And you know, they're raised the same way, taught the same thing, same parents, same friends, same environment. And they just turn out totally differently and do different things and think completely you know, oppositely. So inherent values is another one. And then on the other side of the spectrum, there's innate and there's external. Um, I know in One Piece, they, uh, there was a scene where one of the villains was saying how if you um, if you grow up with war or if you grow up with peace, you're just going to think differently. You know, If you see a lot of things that are being done in the world, um, you're just going to think that that's okay. And then like there are people who grow up uh, with friends whose parents were entrepreneurs, so then they just want to be entrepreneurs. And then if they're successful, then um, they think that, oh, okay, I mean, the success ratio is pretty high, so then they go you know, into doing startups and they're super positive. To answer your inquiry, I really like the aphorism, people make decisions based on emotions and then they justify it with logic. Because at the end of the day, you can really use logic to justify just about anything. Usually when people make decisions or have some kind of frame of thought, it's due to some kind of motivated reasoning where they do something that there's some sort of incentive for them to do and they use logic to justify it. There are actually some very good examples in this room, starting with uh, being first exposed to an idea and that first exposure tends to dominate to, of course, incentive cause biases, to fear of guilt or fear of shame, and then, of course, emotional-based motivated reasoning. So these are all great examples of how our conscious reasoning can be hijacked. But the question is what to do about it and how do you override it? And this is where I think the fancy word epistemology, aka the theory of knowledge, aka how do you know what you know and how do you determine what is true and what is not is so important. And I didn't get into epistemology until David Deutsch and Karl Popper fell into my life. But once I did, I now try to approach everything from that model, which is, look, we're all fallible. It's all a set of guesses. We're using our best guess at the moment. The guesses get tested against the environment and you should always be revising your mental model and always uh, sort of taking new guesses and new conjectures and seeing what works. Obviously very difficult to do and very easy to say, but if if you take that approach, which goes under the fancy name of fallibilism, uh, then I think you just have a much better way of countering these so-called biases. Because I think a lot of those quote-unquote innate value systems are really personality traits in disguise. Of course, part of it, not the whole thing. So for example, disagreeable people would tend to move towards ideas that are antithetical to their society because they like quote-unquote combat, not combat in a bad way, but just combat in general whether it comes to ideas or anything else. So I do think that one layer is what value systems they have, or part of it is the personality traits, and then the second layer is what society they're put in, because whatever idea is mainstream, they're, they're going to go against it. So it seems to me like it's two layered where the value system will define part of the person, and what ideas they espouse, and then the second layer is just what society they're put in, what are the mainstream ideas of the society. So that's actually a very interesting point.